Exactly. All right, let's bring in White House Council of Economic Advisors Chair Kevin Hassett. Forgive me, Kevin. I'm not going to throw you a bone on deregulation immediately. I'll get to that. <laughs> and you're still smiling. Uh, I've got to talk the deficit. Okay. It's gone up $779 billion in the last 12 months. And yet, we've got 4% growth. This isn't supposed to happen. You can't be happy about this. Right. Well, it's definitely something that we're looking carefully at as we formulate the budget for next year. You know, one of the things that's happening is that there's been such a big capital spending boom that the expensing of equipment is reducing corporate income taxes more than was projected by the Joint Tax Committee. But in the long run, that's really good news because there are all these new factories and machines that are going to produce output in the future. And isn't, so isn't, isn't the biggest problem with the deficit not so much government spending, although that is a, clearly a problem, it's rising interest rates which makes servicing $20 trillion worth of debt much more expensive. And there's nothing you can do about it. Well, you know, rising interest rates are part of it, but there's a lot uh, more that we can do on spending. And again, we think that the revenues are going to come back from the growth as soon as the, like, the expensing boom slows down a little bit. How can you cut spending? I mean, seriously cut it when you require 60 votes in the Senate to get a significant spending cut. How can you do it? Right. Well, I think that you're going to have to work with, you know, there are a lot of senators that care about the deficit as much as the president does, maybe not as much as the president does, but almost as much. And there have been a lot of budget deals in the past that made a lot of progress. And the fact is, when President Trump came into office, that there were a lot of really serious problems facing our country, like military unpreparedness and uh, tax rates that were really not competitive. And he prioritized fixing those things. But right now, he's focused like a laser beam on the deficit. It's something that we've been talking a lot about. And again, we're doing the uh, budget for next year. We have to finish that in we, the next few we, weeks. We just and so we're looking at this. Yeah. I mean, we've got to live with a rising deficit. Essentially, I'm reading between the lines. Mm -hmm. That's what you say we've got to do. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that, that there's a temporary decline in corporate revenues because of all the expensing, which is good for future GDP. When that growth comes in, we're going to have more revenue. And uh, in the meantime, we do have to do a better job of getting ahead of the curve on spending. Do you get a lot of revenue pouring in in the first part of next year? Uh, when SALT, mm -hmm. the one percenters who live in high tax states, they're not going to be getting those big tax refunds that they used to get. Mm -hmm. you may well see a lot more revenue coming in. Are you, are you forecasting that? Yeah, I would guess that something like that will happen uh, next April-ish, you know, that when we start to see that, that, you know, when the tax rules change, then people who have complicated taxes won't necessarily have overwithheld. They might have underwithheld, especially people from blue states. Okay. I asked Larry Kudlow mm -hmm. earlier, are we going to get 4% growth in the third quarter of this year? Mm -hmm. He was unwilling to make that kind of forecast. Are you? You know, I, I think it's possible right now. I think the over-under is about 3.7. Uh, you know, we run models every day. And so, you know, Larry and I are both going to be euphoric if we're above 3 because that was something that people said was impossible when President Trump was but elected. That will be down from the second quarter. Mm -hmm. If you're 4.2 in the second quarter, if you're 3.7, seven, three, eight in the third quarter, that's not a good trend. Well, I think that ultimately what we want to do is maintain growth about 3, 3 0.1%, which is really what used to be normal. And so the Democrats told us that we had a new normal, which was like the 1.6% growth that we had in President Obama's last year. We believe, President Trump believes, that we could have normal, and normal is 3% growth. And in a 3% growth year, you're going to have some fours, you're going to have some twos, but they're going to average to three. He wants better than three. Yeah, I know. I've heard him say it, too. Yeah. He wants five, he wants six, he, he wants seven. Two. He uh, yeah. wants much more than three. Yeah, but, but my job is to be like Scotty in the engine room and to remind everybody that we can't go above warp 10. and, and and I think that, you know, for sure we could have a 5% quarter, but at some point when you're the most technologically advanced country on earth, then the only way that you can grow more than, say, 3 or 4% is if you invent amazing new things. Okay. And so it's a lot easier for a developing country to just sort of copy things we're already doing and growth, get growth at that level because they're starting from a lower base. What blew a lot of people away yesterday was that report of 7.1 million right. jobs, uh, job openings, jobs available, mm -hmm. highest number in history, history. I, I think. Highest number. It was the highest number in history. But you don't have the workers to fill those jobs. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do about that? Right. Well, first of all, the number of job openings is astonishing. It's one and a half million more than it was when President Trump took office. Think about that. One and a half million. And so one of the things that we're seeing that's really refreshing is that people are re-entering the labor force, that they're coming back because they can get a job. And President Trump is pursuing a number of policies, like we've got this uh, Council on the American Worker that's trying to make it so that retraining is easier 
easier for people who want to get back in. So we've got a number of initiatives that we've taken to try to find, get people uh, matched to the jobs. But you're right, right now there are more open jobs in the country than there are available workers. But well, that won't be true if people come off the sidelines. And so, so our focus is getting people off the sidelines, people who are out of the labor force back in. Would this administration consider increasing immigration, especially skilled immigrants, to fill the jobs that are available, because you've got a skills gap. Uh, would the administration in consider increasing immigration flow? I think everybody in the administration agrees that we need a more skills-based immigration policy, as many other countries have, and that if we had a more skills-based immigration policy, that it'd be really good for the economy. And, uh, you know, I'm not the immigration policy guy, but uh, for sure, if we had more skills-based, if we copied a country like Canada, uh, then we'd have a much better uh, growth prospect. Kevin Hassett, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thanks so for having me. appreciate it. Good stuff. Thank yeah. you. So I appreciate it. Okay.